All right, you're still watching Ways. The United Nations General Assembly declared May 3rd to be World Press Freedom Day or just World Press Day, observed to raise awareness of the importance of freedom of press and remind governments of their duty to respect and uphold the rights of uh, rights to freedom of expression as shrined under the Article 19 of the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights and marking the anniversary of the Windhoek Declaration, a statement of free press principle put together by African newspaper journalists in Windhoek in 1991. Every year, World Press Freedom Index was published by Reporters Without Borders. Since 2002, based upon the organization's own assessment of the country's press freedom records in the previous year, it intends to reflect the, the degree of freedom that journalists, news organizations, and citizens have in each country and the effort made by authorities to respect this freedom. So, world freedom. I think we've done better. We're way, 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 way better years. over the years, yeah, from where we're coming from. And, and, and it comes across all parts of the world, but some parts of the world, they still have a lot of um, press restrictions where you cannot express freely and all of that. But I think we've, we're, we're, we're getting better at allowing people to express so you know, social media has yeah. allowed a lot of freedom of expression yeah. and a lot of abuse of freedom of expression. Mm. So exactly. I believe we're, we're, pretty, we're quite there. All right, so let's quickly run through our stories. Let me start with you, Jennifer. What did you find first in the news? Um, the Cardona monarch suspends four district heads over misconduct. So the Emir of Zazao has suspended four district heads um, for allegedly using local talks. So there is a rule that when there is any event or any occasion, you're not supposed to hire local talks to come with you or to be around you or be at that event, especially when they are holding weapons. So when that happened, she just suspended. immediately suspended all four of them mm. in its immediate effect. Mm. Also, was that some form of security or a form of, I don't know, breach. why would they have that? with them in the first place? Do they use them as security or do they use them to intimidate other people? Funny, I, I have no idea, but um, this particular occasion was just the uh, um, celebration we just the did. The Eid? Yeah, the Eid. Okay. So, so why, why would really you need, would you need local talks? talks? Around yeah. Yeah. Mm. Especially with weapons. Mm. Mm. So it could have been guns, it could have been knives or cutlasses mm. or anything like that. Mm. I remember one year when we traveled, I think it was Joss. They had just finished this was it was this exact salad because it was after the the ramadan season and you know we were on our way to the airport from just heading to i think we had to do a road trip to abuja because there was no flight or something i can't remember i remember that trip oh you have seen the big big knives they were bringing out from their huh. from their kaftans almost and this was just like gyration celebration mm. and all of that it was not really like it was a fight or something but just imagine if Very there was scary. a provocation yeah. in the heat of that because there were a lot of them yeah. in those big um, tra um lorry um, the back of, of the course. lorries yeah. right and they were a lot they were walking you know across and all of that at some point i had to cover myself because i'm a woman and all of that i had to hide myself you know but i was so scared that day because the be kinds of knife that i saw somebody bringing out from his uh, you know those long daggers mm. yeah. And the sequel one, the one that like it was wasn't funny. And once they start, there's no stopping. There's no stopping. Yes. So I think it's a good move for him too, because you can't really control sometimes. Yeah. yeah. No, my your story. All right, mine is still in Kaduna. Coincidentally, okay. Can <laughs> dissociate self from Kaduna pastor that is offering three hundred and ten thousand heaven ticket. Hmm. Now, I don't know if <laughs> someone has <laughs> heard about the pastor that was no, well, buzzing in the news. Oh, uh, my last week or thereabouts but the story goes that the christian association of nigeria in kaduna state has distanced itself from one pastor you know when they add one that means mm -hmm. you're, you're yeah, yeah. one pastor a day abraham offering to take his members to heaven if they pay a ticket fee of three hundred and ten thousand. Mm -hmm. the video went viral of course on That's social media and uh, he was said to have his operational base in Kaduna and later moved the camp to Adoekiti, where he is presently staying with his members, preparing them for heaven. <laughs> so the state's can chairman, Reverend John Yahab, 
In a statement in Kaduna State, denied neither knowing the said pastor nor the location, as well as the name of the church in any part of the 23 local government areas of the state. So he's a fraud. And then according to him, that he's just a faceless character who can easily give the faith of the community a bad name, especially mm. as a body of Chris of Christians right. in the state cannot even trace his whereabouts or information about him. Mm. And I found this really interesting because this, I mean, this made the rounds and people went as far as calling their family members who were abroad to tell them to come back so that they could make heaven with them. Wow. If not that the said pastor was going to make them that they were going to be deported. Somehow he would be angry and he would find a way to bring them back. Mm -hmm. It's really troubling how people can be brainwashed. Know, hypnotized and brainwashed. brainwashed into believing things like this in 2022. 22. I mean, are they going to die before they make heaven? <laughs> are, are they going to? I mean, are they, they were quite die? a number of people. There were a lot. A lot of them. people who it. have paid and who are camped in what? a kitty. They're tired in of being on most deplorable situations Space. and circumstances mm. just because they wanted to make heaven but Khan wow. has dissociated so anybody who is associating with this pastor well beware nigeria is tiring it begs the question as to why people really want to check no but it tells you the state of the mind of people generally the level of poverty is yeah, making so people is, to this think this is a is a branch of the bigger problem of course yes absolutely the branch of a big so it's just a shows huge you problem I that feel is like religion has Africans or Nigeria in a chokehold mm. is literally holding people by the neck, mm. and people have refused to, to learn think for mm. or reason it out. <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate. You know, like, let's poverty, go to you. poverty does a lot for us, I talk, I, and that goes for my story as well. We talks about um, a thirty-year-old widow arrested for selling her drugs in Kano, mm. hmm. and this was not the first time she was apprehended. And it was said that the lady was identified by the name Jamila Abdullahi. She's been addressed, arrested by the police in Kano for allegedly dealing illicit drugs. It was gathered that the suspect was arrested alongside some man on Saturday, 30th of April, with 35 tubes of rubber solution. Hmm. And according to the commander spokesperson, the superintendent, uh, superintendent of police, says this comes after a month after she's been arrested and released and signing an undertaking not involved in such an illicit act. Evidently, she has gone back into the act and she's been rearrested for dealing and selling drugs. She's a widow, for one. Mm. She's a 30-year-old young lady, for another. And she's the second time she's been arrested. And it makes me wonder how hardened have people become. Because for you to have been arrested once, it means you were you were really given a second chance to turn a new lead and she went ahead and did yeah. it again so you know that it's you know really that disturbing I to see that young yeah. people are under such pressure mm. i mean even if she's a widow does she have to do drugs in order to survive? so uh, i was going to say that you remember that documentary i think it was the bbc that did that um that exposed the drug um the state of um, drug usage in kano remember mm -hmm. I think that video yes that, yes, yes. So, so you would, first of all, I think that because the business might be very lucrative, that's why she feels like, you know what, this one is quick money. Mm. Drug money is quite... It's quite, it's quite, it's quite good money. Yes, mm. it's, it's because it's quite, you, you can easily get, you know, quick cash in terms. very yeah. quickly. Yes, there are a lot understand. of people so, hooked on drugs. Yes, so they're very, willing to so buy. They are willing to buy. So she, the market is there for it. Mm. So, yeah, I, I like the fact that they are giving her, well, rather than do that, why don't we kill the market, right? Let's also stop focusing on the... These are just... Uh, if there is the nobody to buy drugs, mm -hmm. nobody's going to sell it. So yeah. but trust there's a me, big... We yeah. always have of vices course, in our society. Of course, there's a bigger problem, which I tell that there's a drug problem in the North. A drug... Big drug... It's just really like the huge. way... Yes, yeah, just like the way we have the Umpumurumiri or whatever mm -hmm. in, them, yes. in the East. We have Ice. a huge mm. prog problem with drug use and abuse in the North as well. So mm. there's a bigger problem, and I hope that, you know, they'll be able to... Fish out Look the beyond the just... fruits and see the root cause yeah. of these vices. Yeah. So my story is actually on a very sad note, very, very sad note. I listened to the voice note. I, I almost was in tears. This, mm. I think it was finally I had the courage to listen to it this afternoon, where uh, 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 a couple, a military couple, they were on their way for their traditional marriage, and um, they were apprehended by unknown 
right, unknown. They say yet to be identified as aliens, what you call, when you listen to the audio, the guy was saying, have you heard of unknown gunmen and all of that? So the couple were going, they were on their way for the traditional marriage and, you know, according to the source, they said the young woman was first of all raped mm. and was then shot alongside with her mm. fiancé, both of them, they were getting married and um, later the duo, they were later beheaded. Mm. This is very sad. This is very sad. It just begs, I mean, it, I mean, it just reminds me of the conversation that we had with Daily Faro to me yesterday when he was talking about if you can comfortably live within 50 kilometers of the current city that you're in, you know, without the fear oh. of being kidnapped or, you know, or, or being raped. robbed or raped or whatever, you know, or, or being murdered. used or murdered, you yeah. know. So everybody has that fear. You really can't do road trips anymore. There were times, uh, there used to be times where you could actually go on road trips at night because it was a peaceful it was better, 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 better time better, to move. a smoother drive and all of that but now it's really i mean for the longest of uh, almost a, a month now my mother has been struggling to to go back to mm. to base because it was in, in, she left kaduna the day it was the very next day that the attack at the airport yeah. happened you know yeah. so then the train the the double train attack yeah. and all of that so now she's even contemplating how do i go back you know yeah. so it, it, it's a big issue and when we're talking um governance and all of that people should understand that the big the big issue we have in this country is so deep that we have to start focusing on and that was a conversation we had yesterday don't just put your eyes on presidency right the person that will represent your constituency is very important the person that will represent you down to the local government as is very important as a counselor those level. people are the people that will drive good governance drive all these things that we're talking about security so we can't just wake up and just think that we can just um, fold our arms and do nothing and just focus on one messiah that will come in the person of the president or a governor it's not going to work anymore we need to be very very clear on who we want to vote well, so, touching yeah. on that part of the councillors and the local government chairman, if you are in governance or in government, you'd understand why they are almost absent. Mm. So I think we'll hold on to that. When we come back from the break, we're going to be discussing uh, this form reduction, right, of women and all of that. We're going to be discussing that as our conversation for the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back.